Section 2-4, the inverse of a square matrix. <clears throat> okay, briefly, we looked at some things in Section 2-3, and the things that we did, we learned how to add matrices, subtract matrices, we did scalar multiplication, we finished with matrix multiplication. You should be good at those by now. When we take all this and put it together, we can actually develop a type of matrix algebra, at least that's what I call it. We have algebra with everyday numbers. We got algebra with matrices also. There's actually a whole course of mathematics they teach on, on uh, doing things with matrices. So what might be in your mind is, so what about division? Can you divide matrices? And the answer is no, you can't. But there's another way that we could do it. Instead of dividing, we end up multiplying by the inverse. So instead of dividing, we multiply by the inverse. Okay, so let's take a look at a system, because this, this is where it's all going to come down to. Let's say we have a system. First thing we need to do is write that in terms of what a matrix is. Or, I'm sorry, let's write it as a matrix equation. So, we need to think of A. A is the coefficients. So, if you look here, I see negative 2 and 4. And on the bottom, I see negative 3 and 7. B are the numbers in the answers. That's the two numbers over here, and I've got something wrong. This should have been a 7 here. That's the same one's in the book. So that means here I'm going to put a 2 and a 7 for B. And then X, matrix X, is your variables. So in this case, I got X and I got Y. <clears throat> so now when you take those matrices, if you have negative 2 and 4, negative 3 and 7, that's matrix A times this matrix here, that's matrix X, then I get what I call the answer matrix over here, and that's B. So what you got is A times X equals B. This is the matrix equation. And look at this part right here. If I took, remember you take rows times columns, so if I take negative 2 times x, that's negative 2x plus 4y. That's the same thing I had up here, negative 2x plus 4y, and that would be equal to 2. If I took the bottom row times this, it's negative 3x plus 7y equals 7. So all I did was take the system I started with up here and rewrote that in matrix form. Now, before I show you the next step, let's say, I'm going to switch pins here for a second. Let's say I had an everyday equation that I wanted to solve, an algebra equation. So let's say I had, oh, let's make it easy, like 2x equals 10. And I said solve that, but you can't use division. So I can't divide both sides by 2. Well, <clears throat> what you might try is, how about instead of dividing, we multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. I didn't divide. I multiplied. In one of the previous lessons, I talked about something, and I called it the multiplicative identity. 
Well, this is the multiplicative inverse for numbers. The multiplicative inverse is simply the reciprocal. So when I take 1 half times 2, that's 1. So when you multiply the inverses, that takes you to the identity times x equals, and then 1 half times that is 5. And then, of course, 1 times x is x, and my answer is 5. So the idea, instead of dividing, we multiply by the inverse. I'm going to use that thought in a second when I go to solve this equation right here. Okay. Before we get to that step, we need to be able to find the inverse of a matrix. The book does a pretty good job of laying this out. But let's say we had a matrix and just very generic A, B, C, D. And I wanted to find the inverse of that. Well, there's four steps. First of all, you want to find, this is a value, D, it's a number. To do that, you're going to take A times D, whatever A is, whatever D is, and subtract B, C. Okay, so that's going to give us a number. Okay, then we go down here. It says switch A and D. So A and D are these two place right here so that means D comes here A is there B is still there and C is still there then it says take the opposite of C and B so D is still there here I got B I take the opposite of that here's C I take the opposite of that and A is right here and then the last step <clears throat> is you're going to divide each of these entries by capital D. So that's D over, I'll call it big D, small d over big D, negative B over big D, negative C over big D, and A over big D. Now that may be a little bit hard to understand right now because we're talking letters. I'm going to do a couple examples where i got numbers in there, and hopefully that will make more sense for you. And you'll see the same thing written in the book. Okay, so we want to find the inverse of this. The inverse is written as, if this is letter A, then see how I put the little exponent, negative 1? That means the inverse. So according to the rules, we're going to find D. D you're going to take negative 2 times 7, and you're going to subtract negative 3 times 4. That's A, D, minus B, C. So that's going to be negative 14 minus a negative 12, so that's like plus 12. So it looks like that number is going to be negative 2. Okay. So now, <clears throat> it says switch A and D. So now we got 7 up here. 4, negative 3, and negative 2. So A and D were negative 2 and 7, so now it became 7 and negative 2. Then we're going to take the opposite of these two numbers here. So 7 is okay. This becomes negative 4. That becomes positive 3, and that stays negative 2. And then... We're going to divide by D. D was negative 2. That's what I found up here. So I'm going to take each of these numbers divide by negative 2. So that's going to be 7 over negative 2. Then I'm going to put negative 4 over negative 2. Negative 4 over negative 2 is 2. Then I'm going to put 3 over negative 2. That becomes negative 
three halves. I usually put the negative out front. And negative 2 divided by negative 2 is going to be 1. That's the inverse. Let's review our steps again. Up here we found whatever D was equal to. Here we switched A and D. We took the opposite of B and C. So we're working on this diagonal first and that diagonal second. And then we're going to go back and get the negative 2 and divide all those by negative 2 to come up with that inverse. Okay. I'm going to switch my pen again. When I, I like the blue pen because uh, it, it, it's a little bigger and bolder, but I run out of room, so I go back to this pen and I'm I keep things a little bit smaller. It might be harder for you to read, but I'll do the best we can. So let's say we want to solve this system here. Now that's the same system I had earlier. That's where I took and I said, okay, A will be equal to negative 2, 4, negative 3, 7. That's my coefficient matrix. B is the answer matrix. So that's 2 and 7. That was a 7 there. And then my x matrix, the variable matrix, is simply going to be x, y. Got to fit it all in here. So, we know if we take A times x we get B. Now remember what I, I showed you with the when I did the one little thing and I said okay what if we had uh, 2x equals 10 so what we did we took 1 half times 2x and 1 half times 10 and we got x equals 5 like that. Well this is the inverse. So the idea here is I want to take the inverse of A Multiply it times A, because what happens when you multiply inverses times each other? They drop out, don't they? Here I got 1 half times 2 is going to be 1, and 1 doesn't make any difference when you multiply. Same thing's true here. I'm going to take these two, and I'm going to get that identity matrix. And then when I take this times X, it doesn't change anything. Then on this side, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Just like over here, I took 1 half times each side. Over here, I'm going to take the inverse times B. Okay, here's a note. Notice how I put the inverse first. If the inverse is first on this side, it has to be first on that side. Remember how we said you cannot turn matrices around? You get a different answer when you multiply. So the inverse has to be on the left. Don't put BA over here. You'll get a different answer. So essentially what happens, those guys drop out, and we're going to be able to know what x is by multiplying those together. Now, I've already got the inverse. We did it a second ago. So the inverse, I believe, here, let me pull it back off my notes. There it is. So my inverse was negative called negative 7 halves, 2, negative 3 halves, and 1 times whatever B was, that was 2, 7. Okay, so now all we got to do is multiply. Remember when you multiply, you take rows by columns. So I'm going to take negative 7 halves times 2 plus 2 times 7. So that's going to be negative 1. I'm sorry, the 2's drop out negative 7. And 14 
and that's equal to 7. So I'm going to get 7 in the top row. The bottom row, I'm going to have negative 3 halves times 2 plus 1 times 7. These 2's drop out, that's going to be negative 3 plus 7, and that's going to be 4. So I get 7, 4. As an ordered pair, I'm going to write my answer as 7, comma 4. That means x equals 7 and y equals 4. And if you plug those back into my uh, original equations up here, get rid of that one. If I take the 7, 4 and plug it back in here, negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. 4 times 4 is 16. Negative 14 plus 16 is 2. If I went down here and I'm going to take negative 3 times 7, that's negative 21. And 7 times 4 is 28. Negative 21 plus 28 is 7, so it checks. So my answer is 7, comma 4. Okay, look at the big picture for a second. I've actually shown you five different methods of solving a system of equations. We talked about graphing. We talked about the y equals method. We had substitution. My favorite is linear combination. We did Gaussian elimination. And now you have the inverse method. That's six methods of solving these equations. And that's what's important out of all this. You're going to be given um, these systems of equations, and you're going to have to solve them. Bottom line, it really doesn't matter which one you use, but you have six ways of doing it. Some are easier than others. This method here is actually very good on it if you got your uh, your if you got a graphing calculator like your TI-83s or whatever you can actually solve and find the inverse using your calculator. I'll probably show that to you here before too long, not today. Okay, let's do another one. Try to keep it moving here. Okay, so on this one I've got. Uh, 2x plus 5y equals 3, and x plus 3y equals 2. Okay, so that's going to be 2, 5, 1, 3. That's matrix A. Uh, B will be equal to 3, 2. And x is simply x, y. Okay, we need to find the inverse of A. Okay, so if you remember the steps, I'm going to come down here to the bottom. So I had 2, 5, 1, 3. Okay, so D will be equal to, we're going to switch the 3 and the 2. You can actually do all this at one side. Oh, I'm sorry. I got ahead of myself. D is equal to 2 times 3 plus 1 times 5. I'm sorry, minus, minus. So 6 minus 5 is 1. That's nice. Okay. So you switch A and, and D. Then you take the opposites of B and C, and then you're going to take and divide each of those by D, so my inverse is going to be 3, negative 5, negative 1, and 2. You'll get good at doing that. It's not that hard, really. So now I'm going to come back up here, I'm going to copy that. So my inverse was 3, negative 1, negative 5, 2. 
Okay, so being formal about that, my matrix equation will look like this. It's going to be A times X equals B. That's that, written it like this. What we're going to do is take the inverse times each side, and that gives us the answer, whatever it is. So matrix A was 2, 5, 1, 3 times x, y equals, and I'm going to move it over a little bit, 3, 2. We need to multiply by the inverse. So that's 3, negative 5, negative 1, and 2. So the inverse, that's A, that's B. And then we have the inverse over here. I'm sorry, that was X. Over here, I'm going to put the inverse, and I'm going to put B. So 3, negative 5, negative 1, two. Those two essentially drop out. I'm going to find x and y. To find x and y, I simply multiply over here. I think we can do this in our head. That's going to be 9 and negative 10. 9 plus negative 10 is negative 1. On the bottom, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 2 times 2 is 4, so negative 3 plus 4 is 1. As an ordered pair, it's negative 1, comma, 1. And that's how you do it. Okay, I got another example. Okay, so we want to solve the system that says 2x plus 3y equals 10 and x plus 5y equals 12. I'm just going to go to this. 2, 3, 1, 5 times x, y equals 10, 12. Now we've got to find the inverse of A. Let's figure out what D is first. That's going to be 10 minus 3. D is equal to 10 minus 3. That's 7. So my inverse, remember we switched these two guys. So 5 comes first. That's going to be 5 divided by 7. And the 2's down here, so that's 2 divided by 7. The B value is 3. We've got to take the opposite. That makes that negative 3. And when we divide it by 7, I get negative 3 sevenths. And same thing down here, so that's going to be negative 1 7. That's my inverse. So I'm going to take that inverse... times this, times this, that's the left hand side, and we know when we multiply those guys are going to drop out. On the other side I'm going to copy that inverse, 5 sevenths, negative 3 sevenths, negative 1 seventh, and 2 sevenths, Times my numbers here, 10, 12. So xy will be equal to, when I get done, I'm only going to have two numbers there. Okay, stay with me here. I got 5 sevenths times 10. That's 35 over 7. 
And then I've got negative 3 times 12. That's negative 36 over 7. So when you add those two together, that's going to be negative 1 7 for x. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. It's 5 times 10. That was 50. I know what I was, I was thinking one thing and writing another. So that becomes 14 over 7, and that's going to be 2. So this number will be a 2. I'm sorry. I was thinking one thing and writing another. And then the bottom one, we're going to have negative 1 7 times 10, so that's negative 10 7 plus 2 7 times 12, that's 24 over 7. So negative 10 and 24 is 14 over 7. Looks like we get 2 again. So my answer is an ordered pair of 2 and 2. Okay, here's the last thing I'm going to show you, and this is kind of a prelude to the, to the next section. Let's say that we have a 3x3 three three system. My A matrix on this one will be 4, negative 2, and 3. I got 8, negative 3, and 5. And 7, negative 2, and 4. My X matrix is X, Y, and Z. And I'm not going to show you how to find the inverse just yet. That's in the next section. But let's just say I knew what it was. And it's negative 2, 2, negative 1, 3, negative 5, and 4, 5, negative 6, and 4. It's in the book also. And of course, I, I guess I should have put B, but B is equal to 1, 4, and 5. That part's getting easy for you. So my matrix equation, it's always A times X equals B. So if I set that up, it would look like this. 4, negative 2, 3, 8, negative 3, 5, 7, negative 2, 4. I'm just copying numbers. Times my X matrix. So that's X, Y, Z equals 1, 4, and 5. So to solve the equation, we want to find matrix X, and to do that, all I have to do is take the inverse times B. So, X, Y, Z will be equal to the inverse, which I told that to you up here. So that's negative 2, 2, negative 1, 3, negative 5, 4. 5, negative 6, and 4 times 1, 4, and 5. This is the inverse. That's B. You're going to take rows. And you only got one column. When you do that, we'll just make it short. We'll do more of this when we get to that section. The answer is 0, 1, and 2. But this is the inverse method. You write it in a matrix equation, and then you put the inverse in it to solve. Okay, I did the whole section in one lesson. I didn't run out of time or energy or anything like that. Uh, my cell phone cooperated, so we were in good shape. I am, I'm probably going to show you... Um, how to do things on your calculator, and maybe that would help you also. That'll be in the next lesson. Okay.